Hi everyone, welcome back to Easy Coding. Today we are going to discuss about Deloitte Automation Testing Interview Questions and its discussion. So all these questions I have collected from LinkedIn from different candidates. So all the credit goes to the corresponding authors. So without any delay, let's get started. The interview consists of two rounds. First one is technical round, managerial and behavioral round. Let us see the first set of questions that is Java programming challenges. So for these challenges, I haven't included the answers. So if you require the answers, please comment in the comment section. I will include that in the upcoming videos. So the first question in the Java programming challenge is word occurrence count. Develop a Java program to count the occurrence of a specific word in a sentence. And next one is array manipulation. Replace one element in array A, then copy all elements from array A to array B and print them in descending order. Third question is string reversal with the spaces. Write a Java method to reverse a string while preserving the position of spaces. Next question is test ng annotation. So the first one is what is factory annotation. The factory annotation in test ng allows for the creation of multiple instances of a test class. It enables developers to parameterize test making it easier to run the same test with a different input data. So that is the use of factory annotation. The next question is what is data provider annotation. The data provider annotation is used to supply test methods with the data. It allows for the execution of the same test with different set of data, enhancing test coverage and flexibility. Next question from TestNG is what are the different type of annotation, TestNG annotations. That is TestNG includes various annotations such as at the rate test, before method, after method, before class, after class, before suit, after suit, each serving specific purpose in test execution. The last question in test ng annotation is what is the sequence of these test ng annotations. So first one is before suit, before test, before class, before method, test, after method, after class, after test and after suit. So that is the order of execution. Let's move to the next set of questions. So all these questions are from the Selenium techniques. So the first one is highlighting web element. So we have to use JavaScript executor to highlight the web elements. The next question is how to capture screenshots in Selenium. So we have to utilize the take screenshot interface to capture full page screenshots for documentation and for review purpose. Next question is how to handle authentication pop-up. So we have to use the get method with encoded credentials in the URL to bypass basic authentication props in Selenium. And last question from this set is advanced pop-up handling. So we have to implement alert interface for handling JavaScript alerts and confirmation dialogues. Let's move to the next set of questions that is about Git. So we have to go through the basic git commands that is git provides essential commands such as git clone to copy repositories and git add is for staging the changes and git commit to save the changes and git push to upload the changes to a remote repository. So we should be familiar with all these questions from the git that is git clone, git add, git commit and git push. And the next one is scheduling jobs in Jenkins. In Jenkins, jobs can be scheduled using the build trigger section. You can configure triggers like cron jobs or poll SEM to automatically start builds based on specified conditions. Let's move to the next set of questions that is SQL and Scrum concepts. So we have to fetch top 10 records with SQL. So to retrieve the top 10 records from a specific table in SQL, we have to use the following. Yeah, here we can see select star from the table name, order by column name, limit 10. So this will fetch the first 10 entries. And next one is the importance of retrospective meetings in Scrum. So a retrospective meeting in Scrum is held at the end of each sprint to reflect on the team's work. It's crucial for continuous improvement, allowing team to team members to discuss what went well and what didn't and how process can be optimized. This improves the culture of transparency and collaboration. For example, we can say we had a release in the current sprint and what went well and what didn't well with the release and how the process can be improved in the upcoming sprints. 
let's move to the next set of question that is regarding the postman and rest assured so environmental variables in postman so environmental variables in postman allows users to store and reuse values across request enhancing efficiency and adaptability in testing workflows Next one is authentication techniques in REST. So REST Assured supports various authentication methods including OAuth, Basic OAuth and API OAuth providing flexibility in securing API. Let's move to the next set of questions that is about the Selenium weight. So fluent weight, implicit, explicit. So we can see what are the different questions based on this one. First one is explicit weight. Explicit weight allows you to define a specific condition to wait for before proceeding further in the code. It's more flexible than implicit weight enabling us to wait for the particular elements to be visible, clickable or present in the DOM. That is explicit weight. Next one is implicit weight. Implicit weight sets a default wait time for the entire test session. It tells the web driver to poll the DOM for a specified amount of time when trying to find an element, making it useful for scenarios where element might load at different times. If more details and explanations needed on this one, please watch our CGI interview questions video. There we have already covered this one. Let's see the next one that is fluent weight. So fluent weight is similar to explicit weight but allows you to set the polling frequency and ignore specific exceptions while waiting. So this makes it particularly useful for dynamic web applications where elements might take varying times to load. Let's move to the next set of questions, Java string constant pool. So first one is memory optimization. The string constant pool in Java helps in saving memory by storing only one copy of each unique string literal. And next one is string interning. Java automatically interns string literals, meaning identical strings reference the same object in memory that enhance the performance. And uh, coming to the performance benefits, using the string constant pool improves performance by reducing the overhead of creating multiple string objects. Next one is garbage collection. Strings in the pool are eligible for garbage collection only if they are no longer referenced, optimizing memory management. The last one is immutable in nature. Strings in Java are immutable, meaning once created, their values cannot be changed, which is beneficial for the string constant pool. Let's see the next set of questions, that is API testing payloads. So, definition of payload. So, a payload in API testing refers to the data sent to the server to request specific actions. It contains the necessary information for the server to process the request. And what is the purpose of the payloads? Payloads are crucial for testing the functionality of APIs. They help validate the behavior of the API by simulating various scenarios and data inputs. And we can see what are the types of payloads. Payloads can be in various formats including JSON, XML or form data. The format is often dependent on the API specifications and the desired outcome. The last one is examples of usage. When testing an API, you might send a JSON payload containing user details to create a new user, checking if the API correctly processing the data. Let's move to the next set of questions. That is testing process improvement questions. So the first one is can you share a challenging project you worked on and how you handled it? Second one is how do you prioritize tasks when juggling multiple deadlines? Third one is tell me about a time you resolved a conflict within your team. What was your approach? Fourth one is how do you ensure consistent communication with the developers and stakeholders? And fifth one is what steps do you take to improve the testing process in your team? And how do you handle changes in requirements during a sprint? And what's your approach to mentoring junior team members? How do you measure the success of your test automation efforts? If a test suit fails overnight, how would you address the issue? How do you stay motivated and keep your team engaged under tight deadlines? So all these process related questions you can explain with the specific examples from your current project. So if you have any queries on this one, please comment in the comment section. I will try to include the answers for the same. That's all about today's video. Thank you so much for watching. If you like the content, please subscribe for more updates.